welcome. I've managed to get outside in between the rain showers. We've had so much rain in the last couple of weeks. It's hard to imagine that there are so many people living in drought and without access to water. Our service this week focuses on Christian Aid Week's theme of climate justice and how climate change has already impacted so many of the world's poorest people. I love the image of the diverse community of faith being like an orchestra that's brought into tune by the conductor. As we come to worship from wherever we are, May the power of the Holy Spirit inspire us to faithful living in harmony with the rhythms of righteousness for the restoration of creation and the glory of God. Let us take a moment to be still, open to listen, to hear God's call. In your sight, all people are precious and valued. You are a God of justice. Come among us, give us understanding, teach us the way of justice. Let us pray. With the mountains, islands and deserts, we honour the glory of God in creation. With the lakes, rivers and seas, we come to the source of living water. With the land, its soil, seeds and sustenance, we give thanks for God's generous provision. With the forests, the lungs of the planet, we breathe and sing our praise. But we also lament that warming gases fill the atmosphere. Pollution turns clean air foul and climate breakdown wreaks havoc. The sea roars with the grief of all the plastic that fills it, of the destruction of coral reef. The fields exclaim despair for delayed rains and prolonged drought. Christ our God, bringer of justice, forgive us 
for this climate crisis. Forgive our systematic greed, our selfish short-term behaviour. Help us to care for each other, to care for your earth and share your love in word and in action. Amen. This month, Christian Aid marks its 75th anniversary, having begun as a response of the churches, seeking to offer relief and build reconciliation in post-war Europe. As it celebrates the glimpses of hope and change it has brought in so many contexts since, it continues to challenge the scandal of poverty and speak out on behalf of the church. It says, today as Europe and the global north vaccinate our way to a new normal, COVID stalks the global south, where inequality and climate disruption scar the landscape and cause seemingly irreversible damage to our shared home. Christian Aid Week invites us to reflect on climate change and respond. Here is the story of Florence, whose community has been helped by Christian Aid Week donations. Kwa <laughs> Kila <laughs>
Nyendiru matungi ya mwea, kiasi wanga ya meke nesa. Angiasi ya, pavu mbezi usi na umye, wanga ye ongelele po. Boya, kibo ya siya na siya kasi kare na mugo kula si, angibo ya mbua, iwi ya nduweza kila mtu nga kwa toka indo. Our reading comes from the prophet Micah who challenged the injustice and oppression of the leaders of his day. Here he reflects that God doesn't want their ancient acts of sacrifice and worship, but rather lives lived justly with kindness and humility according to God's love. Micah 6 verses 6 to 8 from the Good News Bible. What the Lord requires. What shall I bring to the Lord, the God of heaven, when I come to worship him? Shall I bring the best calves to burn as offerings to him? Will the Lord be pleased if I bring him thousands of sheep or endless streams of olive oil? Shall I offer him my firstborn child to pay for my sins? No, the Lord has told us what is good. What he requires of us is this. Do what is just to show constant love and to live in humble fellowship with our God. I spent three months in Kenya back in 1990 when my parents were working on an exchange programme. I can still remember the conversations about the rains not coming when they should have done. People had almost been able to name the date when the rains would come, but from the 1980s the weather had already started to become erratic. In 1998 I visited El Perito Moreno in Argentina, the largest glacier outside of Antarctica and with the crowds watched in awe as huge swathes of ice crashed into the water. We were sadly shown the marks on the cliffs, indicating the speed at which the ice was receding each year. Last night I spoke to a scientist who said that he and his friends were ridiculed in the 1970s for their predictions of global warming and climate change. How has it taken us so long to sit up and pay attention? Micah was an 8th century prophet who followed in the footsteps of Amos and Hosea. He denounced the greed and hypocrisy of the establishment of his day, along with the merchants whose false scales and weights ripped off the public. His intention was to avert disaster by calling people to repent and change their ways. Interestingly, the prophet Jeremiah goes on to say that King Hezar King Hezekiah listened to the prophet Micah and turned to Yahweh. And the book of Micah shows moments when they're condemned and redeemed, when they lament and are pardoned, where the grace and compassion of God has the last word. The prophets were certainly not always listened to, and over many centuries we've had to be reminded of the words of Amos, Hosea and Micah and other prophets calling us to live justly with kindness and mercy, to walk humbly in God's ways. Who are today's prophets and will we listen? Bramwell Methodist Church has begun a wonderful series called Praying for Our Planet each week inviting a scientist to share their professional wisdom 
but also their own faith and prayer for our planet. Our own Steph Bryant will be one of the speakers. On the basis of the first session, I can really recommend it. Dr. Mike Moorcroft, a lead climate scientist, not only highlighted the, the reality of problems already experienced, but also shared some of the very positive things Natural England are doing to tackle the causes and deal with the effects, finding ways to restore ecosystems and manage conservation areas. In many ways, it seems too overwhelming a problem, but we're called to tackle the stewardship of creation seriously and find ways that we can respond personally and collectively as churches. Christian Aid, as well as its fundraising and project work, shares a prophetic voice on behalf of the church and on behalf of those who are struggling because of the global rises in temperature, almost entirely due to human activity in more developed areas of the world. They highlight the story of Rose, whose family is experiencing severe poverty due to the changes in weather patterns and the need to walk huge distances in order to find water. But they also celebrate Florence's story of life transformed because of access to a dam enabled by Christian Aid support. It reminds us that together we can create positive change. Theologian Jürgen Moltmann wrote that people who truly affirm and love life take up the struggle against violence and injustice and refuse to get used to it. May we refuse to get used to the way the world is. May we commit to struggle for all that it might be. May our true worship be seen through our humble walk with God, following Jesus and living in the Spirit with justice kindness and love for all. Amen. Still water. A new well in a deprived Ugandan village brings back some memories and reflections. Still waters running deep, deep beneath the barren land Secret aquifers await the human touch. You know there is water somewhere. There has to be, as the last drops are scraped from tin drums and concrete tanks. As the rations run dry, a gallon here, a litre there. We drilled all day in the blazing sun and on through the pitch dark night. A few passing goats watched curious Boy soldiers thundered past, oblivious in their battered trucks. The excitement when water is found, cold and sweet, and a hundred metres down. The pump, gleaming silver blue, more precious than the diamond bits of the drill. Water, fresh. Treat with care, well, so much care. So the thirsts drive on, cycling around the watery sphere. The future is an open stream of conscious and of conscience, flowing across our parched lands. Millions walk by crystal streams, yet millions more stand by or fall, awaiting the well. The demands grow and the earth is sucked dry. And will there be water, pure and still? Let us pray. God of abundant life, we see your goodness all around us and we thank you for every part of it. 
from plants and animals which play their part in complex ecosystems, to the dry deserts and stormy seas which test the limits of life. We pray that in this time of climate crisis and ecological uncertainty, you may help us rediscover your love of creation and to reflect that in our own lives. God, who speaks through unexpected people, we thank you for the contemporary prophets who are challenging us to act on climate change. For indigenous peoples, and their invaluable knowledge of the land and sea where they live. For scientists, dedicating their careers to warning us about the changes in the planet. And for young people, striking about their future. We pray that you will help those in power to hear their prophetic voices. Help them to see beyond the short-term political opportunities and business plans and give them wisdom and courage when they face difficult decisions. God of second chances, we recognise the damage we have done to the earth and the injustice we see in society every day. We pray for the coming of a better world with justice, kindness and humility at its heart. We ask that you guide us to be co-creators of this new world. Give us confidence to follow the prophetic voices, to stand against injustice to people and to the planet, so that together in your strength we stop this climate crisis. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wherever you are, please Join together with us in saying the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show me how to stand for justice, how to is right, how to challenge false assumptions, how to walk within the light. May I learn to share more freely in a world so full of greed, showing your innate compassion by the life I choose to Thank you for joining us in worship today and thank you for your support of Christian Aid Week. As well as making a donation, there is a climate justice petition and lots more information on their website. Next week we shall celebrate Pentecost. Do join us then. And now a blessing. May God bless us with wonder at creation's glory. May God bless us with fury at creation's spoiling. May God bless us with courage 
at this critical hour. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon us and on all creation this day and for the future to come. Amen. God bless you all.